Good morning, everyone. So it's really great to be here, and um, I'm really eager to share with you my excitement about OpenStack technology. So let's get started, shall we? Uh, but uh, first, uh, to get the self-promotion out of the way, I'll tell you a bit uh, about us. Uh, for those of you who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting so far, my name is Mladen Stojanovic. I'm a co-founder, one of the founders of Atomia, a software product for hosting companies. Uh, Atomia provides our clients, service providers, with a complete solution for uh, managing hosting business. You buy hardware, you install Atomia on it, and you've got yourself a hosting company. Uh, completely automated with billing, control panels, uh, uh, order pages, and all of this comes uh, designed for unlimited scalability. And uh, you may have guessed by the, by the title of the presentation that OpenStack is our choice of technology for uh, cloud and VPS service. We made that choice uh, in 2011 when OpenStack was very, very young technology, and every th everything that happened so far uh, proves that this was, a, this was the right choice. But enough about Atomia. Uh, I, would, uh, I would like to tell you more about us, but instead I invite you to come visit our booth. We're the only pink booth in the, in the exhibit hall, so uh, there are plenty of people that are eager to tell you more about Atomia. What I'm here for today is that hosting companies need to jump on the OpenStack open train today. There's, there's no pressure there. It's not a matter of life and death, but OpenStack brings to the table a lot of new business opportunities that makes it worth exploring, at least. Uh, uh, and since this is an open stock, uh, open, open source, sorry, uh, 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 free technology, you know, this puts no commitment to you. Uh, so, but let me first remind you what OpenStack is and what it is not. Uh, OpenStack is an open source software for managing uh, public and private clouds. Uh, so, what it comes, it com uh, comes with is a set of features that help you uh, provide and sell uh, services such as uh, the services uh, of the largest uh, cloud hosting providers today. For example, uh, compute service, meaning uh, selling virtual machines. Uh, then object store, ability to store files such as images and documents in the, in the cloud. And uh, OpenStack will come with additional um, tool set, uh, such as networking layer, that will, that will enable a virtually unlimited uh, scalability of the underlying infrastructure. Uh, what OpenStack is not is that it is not uh, a point of sale for hosting and cloud services. Uh, also, it is not uh, a billing solution. So this is where you will need uh, another solution integrated with OpenStack. Uh, for example, Atomia, our product, uh, that uh, has a complete and full integration with, with OpenStack. Uh, but back to the topic of uh, why now? Why uh, today uh, hosting companies need to jump on this OpenStack train? Well, if you look at the history, you will notice that uh, in the past and so far, OpenStack has been adding features slowly over time. New features have been slowly added to the product. What may come unnoticed is the fact that uh, beside these features, uh, the, the platform has also matured gradually. With every new version and every maintenance release, the platform became uh, stronger and more stable. And now, in 2015, OpenStack is blossoming. What we are here seeing now is that in 2015, OpenStack is adding uh, uh, much more features than ever. They're adding uh, uh, at least five major features, and you can see them on the screen. They have these uh, interesting uh, code names, uh, such as uh, Ironic, that's a bare metal provisioning. Uh, then uh, Zakar, which is a cloud messaging service. Manila, uh, file system as a service. Uh, Designate, which is a DNS as a service. And Barbican, which is a, a, a provisioning and handling of, of, of secret data. So the fact that in, in, a, in a short period of time, 
okay, uh, just this year, we're see seeing this, this spike in the number of features, tells us a lot about the state of the project. As I said so far, they have been adding features gradually, slowly, but it seems that the growing community of OpenStack, together with the maturity of the product, has created a critical mass needed for the rapid delivery of features to the market. Therefore, uh, our faith, uh, my faith and Atomia's faith in OpenStack is stronger than ever. I'm sure, sure that it will keep up in the market on, and even uh, 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 bypass market's expectations. <coughs> but there's a question, why, why choosing OpenStack at all? Uh, uh, after all, uh, this is a big decisions, uh, a decision and should be carefully considered. Uh, and there are several reasons for choosing OpenStack, and I typically like to group them into, into four categories. First, there are technical reasons. OpenStack comes with the flexibility uh, to uh, support uh, uh, any kind of cloud product offering. Time after time, OpenStack proven itself to be flexible enough to, to handle any kind of uh, cloud scenario. Second, economic reasons. No license fee means that you are free to design your uh, uh, margins to fit your business case, to fit uh, uh, the way you want to do your business, your business model. And then marketing reasons. Uh, by using OpenStack, you will position yourself as an innovative company. Uh, uh, influencers and early adopters see OpenStack as a, as a cool technology. And companies using it are typically perceived as uh, creative and technology savvy. And finally, from the strate strategic point of view, uh, OpenStack comes with two major advantages. First of them being uh, no technology lock-in. Uh, being an open source technology, OpenStack allows any of the interested parties, including yourself, to alter the product or to contribute to the product to fit specific needs. Uh, and the second uh, uh, strategic reason is a growing community uh, of OpenStack uh, is the best guarantee that the product will meet market expectations and even shape the market in the future. This community is fairly impressive. Uh, uh, currently, there are 1,500 registered developers of the OpenStack, and there are like 200 companies and 400 individuals supporting OpenStack, financially or otherwise. So that's a, that's a huge community. Uh, but all of us in this room have uh, sometimes heard some reasons not to go OpenStack way. And I have uh, found that most of these reasons are purely a myth. So let's go through some of the OpenStack myths now. But to debunk those myths, it's important to understand where they come from. And the best and the worst thing at the same time that can happen to an open source project is to gain too much popularity early on. And OpenStack did create a lot of buzz right from its start. And the good thing about this buzz, it helped create this large community. On the other hand, the bad thing was that it created unrealistic expectations from the first versions. So most of these myths are just relics from those early versions. So let's go through them one by one. Myth number one, OpenStack is uh, expensive to set up and maintain. Well, not anymore. These days, OpenStack is very well documented, and there is a, a large community out there eager to provide answers. In addition to that, there are uh, uh, a lot of commercial options to help you set up and maintain OpenStack-based cloud, and I will mention some of them later on in this presentation. Uh, and myth number two, OpenStack requires extensive in-house knowledge. Well, it does require you to, to obtain such a knowledge, but isn't that the case with uh, every product that becomes a core part of your business. Being afraid to conquer new technology is not an option in today's world. 
Therefore, this myth is just rooted in the faulty logic. And then, number three, OpenStack is not production ready. Oh, it is ready. A lot of large companies are using OpenStack in production today. Just, you know, it's so easy to find on the internet uh, uh, use cases uh, uh, of, uh, by real companies, told by real people on how uh, they use OpenStack. Uh, if you go to the website of OpenStack Summit, you will find plenty of videos of real people explaining how they use it, what kind of challenges they uh, have come to, and how they have overcome those challenges. And the fourth one, OpenStack is an enterprise software. Um, it's not for hosting companies. And I have heard that, uh, uh, that one uh, uh, personally a lot of times, and simply it's not true. OpenStack comes with features such as uh, multi-tenancy, meaning that every uh, a customer account is completely isolated from another one, multiple users within tenants, uh, virtual private networks, all of those making OpenStack perfectly suitable for service providers. Uh, and again, it is so easy to, to find examples of uh, uh, real hosting companies using OpenStack today. Uh, I'm just trying, okay. But the good thing is that uh, the myths are uh, less and less believed in these days. Our recent polls made during the joint webinar of canonical anatomia shows us that, number one, a lot of companies are already in progress or are planning uh, an OpenStack-related project. Still, a lot of companies are concerned by the uh, uh, learning curve of OpenStack. Uh, but uh, most of the companies are aware that, that these days it is possible to overcome those problems either uh, by obtaining the knowledge in-house or by outsourcing a setup of OpenStack or by outsourcing the, the operations of OpenStack. Now, I see some of you taking pictures of this. Uh, if these this slides will be made available by the, by the uh, WHD, uh, if you want to get hold of these uh, results, uh, you, you can also come to our booth and we'll gladly share it with you. And I told you there are commercial options aimed to, to help with, uh, with uh, getting up and running with uh, OpenStack. Uh, so these are just some of the options. Uh, first, there's, there's Canonical, that's Ubuntu company, who's partner with Atomia. Uh, what uh, Canonical has, they have a product called Bootstack, aimed to first help you get up and running with OpenStack, and then to completely uh, do managed operations of the cloud based on OpenStack for as long as you want, uh, and whenever you want, you can take, take it over for the internal maintenance. Uh, then Mirantis, uh, probably the largest player in the OpenStack world and uh, one of the largest contributors to OpenStack project. Uh, Red Hat, of course, and a lot of big names, uh, HP, IBM, Oracle, name it. All of them are having some sort of solution for OpenStack to get up and running with, to maintain it, to operate it. And there are plenty more uh, which you can find on OpenStack Marketplace. Just Google for OpenStack Marketplace and you will find all the, the solutions around, the, around OpenStack. And, okay, I think this was, this was uh, uh, where I tried to convince you that OpenStack is a good thing, but, you know, uh, so far you, you might have come to the conclusion, all right, we can, we can do this, but what exactly should we do with it? And... Uh, of course, provide, uh, provide cloud hosting services. Uh, OpenStack uh, is not just a, just a platform, uh, uh, just not, not just a technical platform. It comes with a fully featured control panel called Horizon, where end users, the customers, can log in and manage their cloud services. They can manage their virtual machines, uh, object store, networking, and so on. And uh, uh, your task would be to get your customers signed up, uh, give them access to this horizon control panel, and that's it. Uh, 
This is one way of using OpenStack. Another way uh, to provide more integrated look and feel is to integrate OpenStack through its API. With uh, okay. <laughs> this is too loud. <laughs> All right. So another way of uh, using OpenStack is to integrate it with existing control panel. And what we do in Atomia is uh, we, we seamlessly integrate OpenStack cloud functionalities with our control panel. So customers, they log into the control panel where they normally manage their uh, share hosting, domains, uh, and then they uh, can also see uh, cloud services. This gives you uh, a lot of uh, upsell and cross-sell opportunities because you can make your share hosting and domain clients uh, move on to the next level of services. Uh, and uh, 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 there is a place for OpenStack in other more traditional hosting services. For example, uh, for VPS services, uh, why having a separate management platform for VPSs when you can use OpenStack and just build for the virtual machines differently? You don't build them uh, on hourly usage base, you build them uh, uh, with a subscription price. Uh, then for the share hosting, you make your uh, share hosting servers virtual machines under the, the head of OpenStack. This will help you scale your share hosting environment easily as your customer base grows. And also this will bring your customers closer, technically closer to the environment where you can give them an easy upgrade path to, to cloud services. And finally, when it comes to dedicated servers, in, in, in the latest version of uh, OpenStack released in April called Kilo, uh, uh, there's a module called Ironic, and the little bear is the logo of that module, uh, aimed to uh, help with the dedicated server provisioning, uh, specifically uh, a volume kind of business dedicated servers. Uh, so you can see OpenStack not as just the cloud uh, providing platform, but also the platform for all of your service verticals. And as we come closer to the end of this presentation, I'd like to, to try to see what's going to happen in the future. And the first thing that, that I can tell is that uh, community of OpenStack will grow. These Google Trends show that the interest for OpenStack uh, is growing steadily over time. This increased interest will generate more contributors, uh, supporters, and advocates of OpenStack. Then more features will come. Just in 2015, we see a spike uh, where we are at uh, expecting at least five, but I believe that there will be more of major features. Uh, and we in Atomia believe that this trend will continue. Uh, finally, uh, Getting uh, uh, and maintaining OpenStack, getting OpenStack running and maintaining it uh, will become extremely easy. It is fairly simple already, uh, but uh, it is uh, to expect that the part of the growing community will focus only on the ease of deployment. So, to sum things up, hop on OpenStack train today if you're a hosting company. This is the right thing to do. Uh, 15 or 20 years ago, you have embraced Apache and uh, MySQL open source technologies to start uh, with your share hosting business. What Apache and MySQL were back in those days, OpenStack is today. Uh, OpenStack is uh, uh, proving itself to be a future-proof solution and being future-proof is what we in Atomia think about all the time. Uh, come to our booth. Let's discuss how Atomia can help with uh, uh, helping you sell uh, OpenStack-based services. And uh, come talk to me uh, wherever you meet me on the, uh, during the conference. Uh, and pretty much, uh, I thank you for your time. <laughs>